that the first dictionaries and encyclopedias were written. It was in the dissecting laboratories of the museum that a scientist named Herophilius first recognized the connection between a person's heartbeat, pulse, and discovered the differences between the arteries and the veins. A man named Satisibius invented the first water-driven clock, as well as the first keyboard musical instrument. was at the Alexandria Museum that punctuation and grammar were invented by Aristophanes. Before this, one word ran into the next with no spaces between them. There were no question marks, periods, or exclamation points either. Reading was hard. And 2,000 years ago, books were handwritten on scrolls of animal skins or papyrus paper made from a tall grass that grows along the Nile in the library at, at Alexandria. There were 700,000 papyrus scrolls and 40 librarians who, just like modern day librarians, helped readers find what they were looking for and kept the materials in order. Each scroll was rolled up on a painted stick and tied with a colored string with a name tag attached. Often, the scrolls were tucked into clay jars or simply placed on wooden shelves. There was a lot of rolling and tagging and tying that had to be done to keep a li library as large as the one at Alexandria in order. Eratosthenes fit right in with all his questions and ideas. In fact, he got a new nickname, Pentathlos. The word refers to an athlete who competes in five different events. It had also come to mean an all-arounder in Greek. They called him that because Eratosthenes was good at so many different things. It was not long after he arrived that the head librarian died and Eratosthenes was appointed in his place. For a question asker and a list maker like Eratosthenes, being the head librarian was a dream come true. Now he could start to find answers to all of his questions. And the questions that were beginning to interest him the most were the ones right under his own two feet. Questions about the earth. Questions about geography. As chief librarian, Eratosthenes was kept busy helping other scholars find information. He also had to keep in the good graces of his employer, King Ptolemy, 
who had a touchy and nervous temperament. In fact, a royal flatterer was employed just to keep the king's spirits up. But Eratosthenes himself had to be ready with compliments and praise for the king at all times. So on one occasion, when he had solved a particularly difficult geometry problem, Eratosthenes dedicated the solution to the king. He then wrote a little poem about it and had it carved into a column that he had erected in the king's honor.